All right, whenever you're ready. Just count down. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is your President Jonathan Nez here with uh, Vice President uh, Myron Leiser and our team. And we're here to just talk to you about uh, some of the updates uh, here on the Navajo Nation. You know, and first of all, I know yesterday was um, appreciation for our uh, healthcare professionals, doctors, uh, nurses. But you know, during this time right now, <laughs> every day is appreciation to our healthcare workers. So those of you that uh, are working, I'm sure you're not viewing this right now because you're. Uh, helping out our Navajo citizens and throughout the country, throughout the world, those of you that are uh, on the front lines in the hospitals, clinics, healthcare facilities, we wanna say on behalf of the Office of the President, Vice President, thank you, we appreciate you, and more so now with this uh, pandemic that's happening throughout the nation. And we, we appreciate you. We thank you, and we also want to pause and just say, you know, take care of yourselves as well. Take care of your family. I know that this is a job that's uh, uh, very demanding at this time, uh, but we, we want you to just at times take a deep breath, take a step back, and uh, take care of yourself, your own well-being, your body, as well as uh, your family members. Um, we thank you for the hard work that you all are doing uh, throughout our Navajo Nation, throughout the country, and throughout the world. Um, some updates, um, we'll be getting a, um, a report. Uh, Jared will be handing me a report from last night's um, situation uh, report that gets issued. Um, but first of all, you know, with the uh, uh, updates that you see in media, you know, um, as well as the news channels out there. Um, Vice President and I are, are doing our best to um, be out there amongst the people, amongst the um, first responders, letting them know that uh, firsthand that, that we uh, appreciate the work that they're doing at the same time getting information back to Winter Rock to our health command operations center on the needs um, throughout the country right now there's a, a demand uh, for um, personal protection equipment uh, gloves and face uh, face mask uh, face shields the the cover coverings for our healthcare professionals and since there's a high demand throughout the country, um, it's uh, very difficult to get uh, much supplies. Uh, a little bit is ordered here and there, trickling in uh, here to the Navajo Nation. So, uh, but there are equipment that are coming in um, bit by bit, and we ask for your patience. Um, we have received um, some items from the strategic national stockpile um, that has come to all 50 states and divided out to the counties based on population. And through the counties, we've received uh, shipments to the Navajo Nation. But, um, you know, uh, it's quite uh, alarming to hear that some of the shipment that we get um, won't even last a week. Um, but that's just um, for everybody uh, all across the country. And so we're trying to find resources out there, companies out there that are willing to sell us, um, sell us equipment, um, PPEs to, to our healthcare facilities through our HCOC. So when I say HCOC, that's the Health Command Operations Center. So. Uh, pursuant to yesterday's uh, report, we have 148 positive cases throughout the Navajo Nation. 
We have uh, five uh, confirmed deaths on the Navajo Nation. Navajo County on the Navajo Nation, 69. Apache County on the Navajo Nation, 16. Coconino County, uh, 32 on the nation. Um, those are in Arizona. In New Mexico, McKinley County, uh, nine positive cases in New Mexico. San Juan County, New Mexico, 15 on the Navajo Nation. Cibola County, New Mexico, one and six in San Juan County, Utah. And as I have been reporting, we are, these numbers indicate residents of the Navajo Nation. Uh, you know, many of us family members uh, live off the Navajo Nation and, and some are permanent res re residents off the Navajo Nation. So those individuals uh, are not counted in this list, uh, even though they are members of the nation. We're focusing on just the residents of the Navajo Nation. So it could also mean these are non-Navajo uh, citizens that are residents that maybe work here at the school or in the healthcare facilities. So just wanted to clarify that. We're, we're working on a um, dashboard. I know there's a lot of questions about how come the Navajo public uh, is not told where these um, cases are. Um, there are privacy laws until those privacy laws get changed. We have to abide by that, you know. Uh, and plus, there's a lot of investigations going on to verify um, positive cases, including the deaths, you know. Uh, and that's the reason why um, we are, there's a lag time in getting the information out. but. What we're trying to do now is to get a dashboard uh, reporting uh, in place so that uh, the Navajo public see on a map where the general area is um, throughout the Navajo Nation of some of these, uh, all these cases here on the Navajo Nation. So um, please be patient. We'll, we'll, we're working on that right now and we'll uh, let you know when that uh, gets um, Put it into put on our, our Facebook page, our social media page, including <clears throat> the Navajo Department of Health uh, web, website. So, as you all know, uh, executive orders um, started uh, the emergency declaration, and now we have four orders: health, uh, public health emergency orders. And last night, um, we started our curfew from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. Um, Vice President and I were out there manning, helping out with the limited resources. Um, now we, President and I have to step up and help uh, with the operation. As you all know, there's a lot of people out there saying, close the borders, close the borders, close the borders. You know, I already started hearing complaints last night about our, our family members that want to come back, what's going to happen to them, you know? And uh, I just want to say to you, those of you that are right now commenting on this town hall meeting, please, let's not be negative. Let's not be negative. Now is not the time to be um, arguing with one another on social media and saying all this negativity. Uh, enough of that. You know, we were taught better by our elders. You know, a lot of us grew up with that harsh Navajo love that we get, you know. And let me remind you that that's how we grew up, many of us, respecting our elders, respecting authority, respecting leadership. You know, sometimes they tell you that it, you shouldn't be um, talking negative about leadership. Let's bring that teaching back. We had, we had three months of being with our kids. Now, our, our children, some of you that are talking negative on, on social media, your, your children see that. I'm sure they see those comments. Are, you, are we going to put that negativity on the next generation before us? Think about that. We are supposed to be lifting each other up during this time, helping each other during this time and praying for each other during this time. So help in doing that, ladies and gentlemen. And last night, we did a curfew. 
we we had to help out in the process because a lot of these public safety personnel are doing operations throughout the Navajo Nation, giving out care packages during the day and in the evening they got a rest. You know, there's a lot of burnout starting to happen. We were in about we we're in three, four weeks of direct operation of this public health emergency. Three weeks now since we uh, closed a community down. They're working around the clock with the operations to get food and supplies to this community, Chilchimito. Those of you that are listening from Chilchimito, thank you, especially the younger generation there. You all are stepping up and saying, I'm okay. Focus on the elderly, focus on the, the ones that can't help themselves. Thank you so much. And I know that there's probably a comment right now saying, how come he's only talking English? So let me just say, yeah. <laughs> China Ahagan in the house, Kododi, Ni, Kodoshina, Dobbil, Yeltio, Nich, Kodo, E, Nantin, Aschane, Delia, Nihini, and Antinigi, Ash, Masan, she chased Chanel. Had I not had Nene, E, Nantin, Bidahil Zatich Aro Kontla, and Ninda, Kagin, Hatchin, and Lingi, Nihir Masanda, Kodo, Nan Lady, Sadi. Computer be a dish. I don't be a hot hot no, that you're that here. Tlashi hota, Tlashi do hot out. Nishina had long be a da ho at the hula. Oban to the kissle. Shah ha either, ah, dida ha et either, um, do hot out a jish, you know, ha equit at me. Ela hate a be a ho at la. Hail up a ma hail up a jet. Hail up a must son, hail up a che, hail up a nulla. Dola a hot out, Joby Yaho, at the la, quit it knee. Eh, has cajun and tine, deachin' beda hilza, she ain't a thing. Could only Joe buy inch cage, my son, she chain him, and the Codona Halchin, which he had asked here. I don't know, let the Codo con ash on your car, not jah. Bigger had the bed needed all that. You can't not jah, that con handal, Nashigi. You're not tied and Linigin, he bash mass and then Linigin, the Hido Kodo, Shinado, Kede, she got us to Dagi, she can't not worry. What's other dots then? We can't so ze. A hot a day ya, de Nash Nagi, Nacha could a deal nish out there. A dada a con a teen that they'll call. De con a yaba run. Say, be old, Kisan, that they'll call the Nebuchay of a car. Ah, how run then, that's all, Traha, no. God counts a love in that jet. E. Ah, say, be old, Kisod only, a bean jet, a slap, old Kisod bean ago. E. Cut out a door, con, and that's dead, the door left, the Nebuchay of a car. Jodina, sneaky, benina. Ah, how run then, that's all, Trach et a deep no, sir. Say, ah, so. Nick at the house, eh, a head la. Here, Abazini, eh? Codoni, a masson, he chain, and I let out in the other house. I hear her. Ado Codon, that not him. Here, the shay, or hot out on her net door, not until he should go dash like a codal yard. A condon here, Codoben, that need tin she ain't no thing. Ash horn, the hand, and that's all transitionita. I shall never think over on this thing over on a hast a and elt a conto cousin tragi. Say beats at Nast eights at the Hal Bijigi, cut bit at all not the schne. Dido do by a just kit a hat named the Nietzsche Ashton at the Schlick at Nick any in a schlack a schlack go. Benetton does eat. Begal 
Adajitten. She came not seen. Did the crossing tragi benina? Ebenina, a ha, ha, neat, zeno, daddy, ne, she came not seen. A chin and not lenigi do, codo, han net near Jacodal, neggy, bend that not chin ash order. Tada do, ne, dear ado, like the neck at your heart, zee, the nata, the nata di, ne. To the neck at chin spells and lay codoba the hush net near Masan, your chain, in Nalabiche. Car nature, how they ya, she came not seen. Did all the Belagana be key ya, godina, sneggy, eh, oh, her yuk at. But that does not need the nerf, but like slide on Lenigi. Ebony na akon, the nebby key up a cow. A quare hogan de and das all tra that he known that need him. Ados car do de need she and that he'll yed or let la. First of the month they snow. Ash one is my son, she chase another. A con de nebi kea pacal na yabaho and das nello, should das eh? Nan George got that the hat ne, kin son of God, the page of the hat the hat no, the bayada tie. Aye con, I die and he get a ha ah ah de belagana. E aje o you na sneaky got ye shin da kay than he snow, other than he nas eh? Ado are there with a gun at door? Even in no witch at the bidding, no conch on that craggy with a gun. Con the parks of that eggy scot that the deal car. Eh, what are a no work to conch on that credit to Ada? Are there not sneaky the could they use in that credo less with a gun? Edo do, do the needs in the never key up a car. Even in a con the never key up a car. Nalia Bauhan, Chadash, and Ashkonish, my son, she chased Nala. Nothini, Nas the Sothini, the Nas the Nothinigi. Kodoshi, Dr. Fowler, Dinago, Dinado, JT Willie, Shin Kodoni, Jashane, they let or let. Been they Neshigi is calm. Ba Ado di dot nal so snihiji, we car they let or let thee now. To tea the more is lean. Washington, that they'll call. The Najosh, the casinos, that Egido, Trandes, that they'll call. Old Trat Dock at Trandes, a Trat the Moye, that they'll call. Judina Snegi, ya Bastigi, giving a Ato Yego con, uh, Nichesnito, uh, Ato, uh, Lacon. In Dal Neshigi, ya das tiota. Ebony na dig at April. Your cathone a hot edo le decon near Washington. Could the Tsagaho zande that del car do less. As a April all to be ye. Dean slat the more. A hot a a da deal ne do dido. Na josh jido a hot edo less. A pinti that del car do less. Old trat do that del car do let you coja hosto how it's order do your to how it's order other at silly day than linigi a i da not so see a land a slain egg at that the doll cash old tragi da no nikido arco that deal nicht to egg what i not so nikijib car il netto less case it now you know i also want to mention that there is an executive order that was signed by Vice President myself and the Attorney General. And today, before the end of this uh, town hall, we are going to be signing uh, another executive order. And that executive order is just to extend the closure of this executive branch government for the rest of April. As you know, the state of Arizona, the state of New Mexico have shelter-in-place orders. And the governor of Arizona, I appreciate his closure order coming in. There are also both governors said that they're canceling schools for the rest of the school year. And with our executive order, 
We're going to be closing our casinos, extending that closure to majority of April. We're looking at April 28th. Up to then, we'll reevaluate. Excuse me. We'll reevaluate that then. But this executive order would close our schools, cancel our schools for the remaining school year, and extend the executive branch closure up to April 28th uh, so that we can slow the spread of coronavirus here on the Navajo Nation. 148 cases right now. I think it would be, would have been a lot more if it wasn't because of the great work that our physicians are doing and the healthcare workers being proactive. And all of you Navajo citizens that are listening and staying home, well, many of you are saying, yeah, President, I've been hunkered down for, for three weeks now. Thank you for doing that. And it's because of you that are staying home that we're not peaking out as other states are peaking right now. We're a big nation. 27,000 square miles. We're in four states. We have 350,000 Navajo members as of the 2010 census. You know? Hopefully we get an accurate count for 2020, and I see that. Um, membership rising for the Navajo people. But let me just focus on the five confirmed deaths here on the Navajo Nation. One confirmed death is one way too many. But five here on the Navajo Nation are relatives who have gone home to the Creator. This is a serious, serious public health emergency. And that's the reason why we are giving out these orders, letting you know to stay at home. If you need to get supplies, just one person from the family to get the supplies that you need. Tomorrow is first of the month. I know there's a lot of people that are concerned about their elderly. We have a, an operation going throughout the Navajo Nation. So what we're telling our elders and what we're telling you is just to stay home here on the Navajo Nation. We have supermarkets here on the Navajo Nation. Utilize those. Don't go off the nation. You know, but both ways here, there's a lot of concern. Those that are in border towns are saying, oh, well, we don't want the Navajos to spread co uh, coronavirus into these border towns. And vice versa, some of us Navajo citizens are saying, close off the borders. We don't want our visitors to bring in more coronavirus into our communities. The bottom line is just we don't want the spread of this virus. And let me just pause there. Five deaths here on the Navajo Nation. Five deaths. We want our, to protect our elders. We want to protect our children. We want to protect you. That's the reason why we're doing a lot of these orders. Please listen. As I was uh, out yesterday with the vice president, many of you cleared the streets by 7.30. Uh, at least here in Window Rock, we saw a ghost town. Those businesses that closed up early, thank you for abiding by the order. We need everybody to do their fair share, their share in, in helping protect the Navajo people. The last thing I want to mention is that, back to the executive order, we're going to extend the executive order. So there's going to be a closure, except for essential personnel. Essential personnel are those that are needed in the organizations out there to provide the necessary services to run this nation, to run and get uh, these businesses moving. Uh, and restock for you all. They, have, they should have letters. Some of you that showed your letter and your ID, thank you for abiding by that, those businesses out there. 
So once eight to five, it's a, uh, there shouldn't be anybody out there. The executive order is going to close all our schools here on the Navajo Nation. The states of Arizona and New Mexico have already done that. I'm sure Utah will follow suit. BIE, we want these schools closed for the whole month of April, April 28th up to April 28th, so we can reevaluate this. The casinos will be closed. I, I talked to uh, a board member yesterday. They're going to be doing uh, a meeting to do that. And we also want to let our visitors know that we're working hard to close the Grand Canyon. Well, all our visitors coming now, now with the uh, staying home order by the governor of Arizona, we, 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 we think that closure is coming up soon. Because people would travel, visitors would travel on the Navajo Nation, they go, well, Arizona doesn't have no shelter in place order. And we said, well, we're a nation. We have a shelter in place order. That's why you shouldn't be roaming around our nation right now. It, really, it's no time to be traveling anyway, right? Throughout the country. And again, visitors, you know, with all due respect, please abide by our laws, our ordinances, and the sovereignty of our Navajo Nation. So if that Grand Canyon is still can be open, that's going to bring a lot more visitors here into Arizona, into the Southwest. And so Department of Interior, we're wanting you to close down the Grand Canyon. And thank you for closing down those that are within the Navajo Nation, the Canyon de Chez, Navajo National Monument, Chaco, um, Hubble Trading Post. Go to the Navajo Department of Web's website and take a look at this 20 plus page document and take a look at those orders as well as i said there's a lot of questions coming in a lot of questions coming in where a lot of the answers if you read the orders you know those questions can be answered and these are frequently asked questions that we compile that we get take a look at this read it as well uh, it will answer, I'm sure, most of those questions out there. I know there's questions that are, keep looming up, and, and we're doing our very best to monitor uh, social media, monitor the calls that come in. We're going to get more uh, um, people on the phones uh, so that questions can be answered. Your place of business, essential personnel, is really delegated to you. And I ask businesses and companies out there essential personnel are the ones that help run the nation so don't be giving letters to people that are not essential please we're giving you that leeway right now but if we start seeing more traffic and seeing people that are saying that they're essential and they're uh, taking out these letters with your letter, business letterhead on there, we're going to have to reevaluate that. So don't take advantage of that. You know, NTOA's got a great uh, little letter that they're showing. I mean, it's obvious that their NTOA is essential. They keep our water, uh, the natural gas, uh, the electricity going. Uh, NECA is another one. You know, all these businesses. Bashes is another. They're employees. So please abide by that. And again, let me end by saying there are 148 positive cases on the Navajo Nation as of last evening. Five deaths, oh, five too many. One is way too many. Let us take care of ourselves, Navajo people. I know it's bringing out the best in, in some of us, helping each other out, helping our neighbors out. Just imagine what our Navajo people went through when they went on the long walk from here, Window Rock, all the way to Fort Sumner. And that's where the best came out of many of our ancestors, helping each other out, carrying the load for our elderly, carrying the children for our mothers, all the way there to Fort Sumner, persevered there for four plus years, signed this treaty that we're trying to remind the federal government there's a treaty obligation. You know, there's a, of course, there's frustration from leadership, not just here on Navajo, but all of Indian country. 
how we feel that the United States government once again has um, ignored or, or even uh, left out the, the first residents, the, the first people, the first citizens of this country, indigenous people. Three bills that were passed by Washington, D.C. Uh, we haven't yet seen any of those resources come in. But you know what? We're strong people, ladies and gentlemen. We have overcome tough times and we're utilizing our resources to help our people out there. Government can't do everything. That's where the stories that I'm hearing about people hauling water for their grandparents, people helping get water and hay for their elders out there, that's Navajo right there, helping each other out to overcome this. And we'll overcome this, just as we overcame Fort Sumner while and we came all the way back. Those 8,000 people who went to Fort Sumner and 8,000 plus who hid out throughout the, uh, the region, 16, 15,000 plus citizens during that time helped make this Navajo Nation a great nation. We are at 350,000 now. It's our turn, ladies and gentlemen. We got to think of our future, our children, our grandchildren, our elders. We can't let our elders leave us early. They have valuable knowledge that they still can give us. So that's why we got to protect them so that they can continue to share their story with our younger generation. And that's resilience, that's empowerment, that's a story that we need to magnify throughout this nation at this time right now, that we are overcomers, we are resilient, and we'll be able to get through this COVID-19, this pandemic that's taking our nation. So, Dinathnigia, <laughs> Chin not Lenigi, A not Lenigi, Kodo, Hanen Hijet, Kodal Ne. Le are the Kehat Inigi, Kodo, Anni Naragi, A Toshani Gido, Kon Hibeka, she took a bah a ye lado, Otta, she check ye lada, the hot no, Hanet, Kodon Hijet, Kodal Ne. A la, to aid the Nenny, the Nenny, clean is car nature, thought she's in Dalinish. Ebe had a nail, ne? Ebe and he'd see she ain't not lean. Oh, here to the Zendor could all bear. Nicheda sneaky are not so. A da da ha, ya? Ilka natcha. Ado did a cona and tin, need a good old neg, do bend that not tin ash one. Here could all consortium each ass, see the leshic asian, ne? We love you. Navajo people, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you once again. And we'll have more of these update meetings uh, throughout the, the months. Uh, and I'll turn the time over to our vice president. I'm wearing gloves, I'm holding the mic, so please no comments about wiping down the microphone. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. It's good to be here this morning. Um, and just, you know, I think today is a kind of a, a, a business-oriented uh, update town hall as we'll be discussing some modifications that our businesses that serve our Navajo patrons will be implementing uh, today. So um, what we've learned uh, to this point, uh, again, I don't want to be redundant, but yet I think we need to be redundant in order to pass along the vital information and the necessary alerts and measures that we need to take as a people in order to stay safe, uh, stay home, and, and, and save lives. 
So um, our schools in New Mexico and Arizona have been canceled for the remainder of the season, uh, the, the school year, um, and sports has been canceled for the remainder of the seasons. Uh, uh, casinos are extending their closures until a time that is deemed uh, to be safe. So uh, good job for all of those uh, gaming boards out there. They know that uh, they need to keep their patrons safe as well. <clears throat> As we know and as we see being played out across uh, uh, the news networks out there and the major media outlets, uh, businesses are adapting. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a new norm. As you know, our businesses operate with the idea that their patrons be able to be served with the highest levels of professionalism and safety. Businesses all across the land um, are evolving and they're adapting. Although we see the need to urge our mom and pop stores to uh, please exercise caution, maintain the proper distancing measures, no large crowds, more than 10, uh, with proper cleaning and sanitation of all doors, doorknobs, uh, fixtures, store fixtures, and uh, the counter space. We find ourselves needing to advocate for these entrepreneurs to exercise an elevated, compassionate capitalism. We know the bottom line is being impacted here, but we're in this all together. Uh, what we're seeing is maybe a potential uh, potentiality of strengthening our economies much more, our local economies. As you know, uh, every municipality, every community wishes to preserve their uh, buying power to keep it home. You know, President and I have been saying buy Navajo, buy local. And uh, yet we find ourselves uh, having to take and undergo these measures in order to uh, maintain uh, uh, that our people are safe. And so uh, we, we will continue to advocate for that. Uh, we are going to uh, also uh, remain um, open to, um, to that we owe our, our patrons, the public, our people, the protection that we'll take to uh, keep our people safe. Please advocate and elevate your concern for your patrons. Uh, we've also advocated for our larger store, grocery stores to consider our elders, uh, our most vulnerable population to offer a segregated time for them to be able to shop and purchase the items that they need and their cupboards to be filled during this time and this first time of the month. Uh, as we go longer with the COVID-19, literally shutting down commerce, we hear of different things that many are doing to bolster and jumpstart their economies. In our states of Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah, the businesses have partnered with their respective governments. New Mexico uh, naming $100 million uh, recovery fund, which will provide discounted and uh, short-term loans to businesses struggling to stay afloat during this coronavirus uh, crisis. Arizona has launched ArizonaTogether.org or .org, so uh, go to these websites and look. Utah also launched Utah Leads Together. Unprecedented times calls for unprecedented actions. What I see is, uh, is that the businesses are getting ahead of the bottleneck that we see once these sti stimulus packages start to hit our local uh, communities. And so uh, they're all just planning. And even our own Navajo Nation, we've uh, started our NEST, which is our Navajo Economic Stimulus Team. And we're designed just to do just that, to uh, plan for the future, which is changing and evolving even before our eyes. So along with this COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen the way that the world has dealt with this crisis. We've seen our measures in which we deal with change and morph into what we now see being implemented. The extension of the emergency that also uh, uh, legislation, uh, emergency declaration that also mandates now a curfew that people uh, are, that need to be kept from being out from 8 p.m. until 5 a.m. every day. We can also do more to flatten this curve that we are talking about, that our peak here on Navajo, if we're successful, will peak by the end of April. And if not, then our peak is further down the road. And this means that many more will get sick. Many more will potentially succumb to this dreaded COVID-19 pandemic. Yesterday, President and I spoke with Governor Mich Michelle Lujan Grisham, and we agreed together that we needed to take strong stances as leaders of our respective governments and that we mimicked one another in making these necessary changes in order to help keep our citizens safe. So I want to say good job to Madam Governor um, and also um, our President 
Jonathan Nez, who's uh, exemplifying uh, exemplary leadership capabilities. And so without, without not taking too much time, I want to just thank you again, Shedinah, our people that uh, continued prayers to be safe, to stay home, stay safe, and save lives. And so together, we'll all get through this, and uh, this too shall pass. So we thank you again. And uh, next, I'd like to introduce Rosalind So, our Navajo uh, area, uh, IHS Area Director. And so we appreciate you, and thank you, Rosalind. Yeah, long. Good morning, everyone, and good morning, uh, Vice President. Thank you for that. Um, we appreciate the opportunity to provide additional updates to you from the Navajo Area Indian Health Service. I wanted to um, continue to stress the, the need for coordination and our part to coordinate with the Navajo Nation uh, Command Center as well as the President's Office and continue to support the messaging that is coming out of um, the President's Office and, and the Department of, of Health Command Center. Uh, to that, we just uh, completed a call earlier this morning. This is a call with all of the 638 programs, the tribal operated programs, as well as the Indian Health Service. And again, looking at our healthcare system as a, as a system for the Navajo area is essential to make sure that we maximize the resources and the, um, the, the people that we have trying to do the work that, that we're trying to do. Uh, to that, um, we continue to modify and update our Navajo Area IHS surge plan. Uh, this is again in, in coordination with the Navajo Nation. We are looking at alternative sites as well as staffing, and we're adjusting and moving our staffing as we need to do that to meet the, the needs that we have throughout the Navajo area. We're also working actively to project our PPE uh, the, our personal protective equipment and supplies, looking at our burn rate there and trying to use what we have experienced so far to date, as well as what we anticipate uh, with regards to the surge that we are planning for in the Navajo area. We are also continually to hope that we will get this week, by the end of this week, uh, our ability to do rapid testing throughout the Navajo area. And what this means is that we will get results back in a faster uh, faster turnaround time as well as being able to um, test more people as they are presenting to our facilities. We're also continuing to work with our EPI, our epidemiology response team. Again, the purpose of this team is to monitor all of the positive cases and track where these, where these individuals have traveled so we can try to um, inform and educate patients or, or potential patients on, on the need to stay home or self-quarantine while they uh, go through this process. I continue to ask for support for our frontline staff. Again, these are our doctors, our nurses, as, as well as all of our service unit staff, our leaders that are working around the clock. Um, this is essential for our housekeeping staff. They are working very hard to help us make sure that our facilities uh, are cleaned and, and um, maintain the, the required expectations that we have set for them during this very difficult time. I also want to say again, I cannot express the, the uh, appreciation for the president's support. The President Nez has been very proactive from the beginning and we support his efforts. To that, his, the notice about staying at home, that's absolutely crucial for us right now for us to stop the spread of any more cases on the Navajo, uh, Navajo Reservation and, and within the Navajo area. And finally, I want to let uh, everyone know that there is money that's starting to flow. Uh, we are processing those funds as quickly as possible. We anticipate that within the next day or so that all funds going to the tribal operated programs or the 638 programs will be paid out. Uh, last Friday, we transferred funds to each of our federal service units. So we're working very hard on that front. Again, thank you very much to everyone. We appreciate all of your kindness that you have demonstrated to me and my team. And we, we appreciate um, everything that you're doing to support us as well. I'm going to now turn it over to uh, Captain Brian Johnson, who is my deputy for the Navajo Area Indian Health Service. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, nice to be here today uh, speaking to you all. Uh, Captain Brian Johnson with the Navajo Area Indian Health Service. I serve as the uh, Acting Deputy Area Director for the Navajo Area Indian Health Service and have been involved uh, directly with uh, Ms. So, the Area Director, uh, for the last uh, couple of months 
uh, in preparation and working uh, diligently with our uh, federal service units and with the Navajo Nation and the, our tribal uh, health organization partners. Um, I just want to stress to um, the public that we are working uh, closely, as Ms. So indicated, uh, locally, uh, thinking of uh, how we work together as, as, as federal par partners, tribal partners, and working with the Navajo Nation. Um, we meet uh, routinely, regularly, to update. Um, we've had the opportunity to meet with uh, the uh, Navajo Nation Tribal Council on multiple uh, times. We've also continued to meet with the Navajo Nation President and Office of the Vice President uh, routinely as well. Uh, working with Dr. Jill Jim as the Navajo Nation has their uh, uh, Emergency Operations Command set up as well, as well as Navajo Area uh, Emergency Operations Command. And I want to also stress that we continue to uh, plan and actually take action in preparing in the event that we do see a, a patient surge here on uh, Navajo Area Indian Health Service. We are working uh, through our plan in terms of uh, our primary facilities and how we can expand to serve additional patients uh, if needed uh, when that time comes. We are also uh, uh, reaching out to our partners again such as the Navajo Nation uh, Emergency Operations Center and uh, FEMA to, uh, uh, to uh, plan in the event that we need uh, alternative care sites. So um, just wanted to just elaborate a little bit that we are uh, meeting routinely, we are planning, we are organizing, and um, working with the frontline staff in terms of pro uh, the provision of health care. Um, for the individuals, we, we've had a number of questions coming in about um, commissioned officers. Who are, who are stationed here on the Navajo Area Indian Health Service. And um, a number of those individuals across are considered to be mission critical. And we continue to uh, utilize these officers to uh, work in incident command at each of the federal hospital sites, but also at the tribal sites. I see that commissioned officers are assisting with that as well. Um, on, a, on a good note, we see that um, nationally there are supplies that are becoming more readily available and our ordering uh, is, is occurring uh, daily and um, just making sure that we're preparing to meet any need that uh, be may become available. So we look forward to continue working uh, locally. We continue uh, working with our partners, both with uh, Navajo Nation, with counties, with state and federal partners to address the needs and prepare uh, for this um, COVID uh, situation. So I just want to thank everyone, and um, uh, we, we look forward to continuing our great work together. Thank you. President Jonathan Nez, Vice President Myron Lizer, Ado of Shkedo Shdene Yate. I represent and work for the Division of Community Development. The Division of Community Development uh, service and provides uh, technical assistance to all 110 chapters. And I must be clear that although we work with all of the chapter officials, and our chapter and our Navajo Nation delegates, we also serve the 300 plus Navajo Nation people. And therefore, we close the chapters. We close the chapters for large social gatherings and events and large meetings. In a recent resolution, the three quorum resolution was passed. That allows chapter officials to conduct business uh, via teleconference, um, on the phone, through technology and maximize technology as stated in the public uh, health order. So we're encouraging our chapters to understand the meaning of open 
The chapters are not open to the community. Again, the intent of closing the chapter is to protect all of our Navajo people. The utmost safety is important to our Navajo people and our elders. We do have staff identified, and I do know that chapter officials have an inherent desire to provide the essential services. And those essential services are water for livestock, delivering meals to senior citizen centers or senior citizens and our elders. Some of those essential services are, some of our chapters uh, have postal service offices. Some of our chapters also have um, propane uh, available to uh, community members. And it's those essential services that must continue, and I wholeheartedly acknowledge that, but I'm asking our chapter leadership and our chapter delegates to adhere to the recommendations and the planning, the pickup and delivery planning for those items. As stated in recent legislation, uh, CMA, Dash 11 dash 20 on the emergency funds those funds will be allocated to the chapters for effort plan and relief to COVID-19 efforts are maybe organizing firewood efforts are maybe putting putting into place the plan for water hauling efforts also include coordinating efforts to feed elders if those are the efforts that will be put in place, please do so with the utmost care and critical planning for the employees and to the participants or to the residents who will be receiving those items. This is a time to understand that all intentions of the government and the communication coming from the Navajo Nation is to protect the Navajo people. And our efforts to do that have gone extreme. And we're asking people to stay home, to practice social distancing. The funding allocated to the Navajo Nation 110 chapters also falls similarly in time with the first of the month. And I am fearful that we could have a lot of movement here and we must do our best to educate each other and all the Navajo families to remain or to stay at home. That's the only way we can overcome is if we stay at home, practice social distancing, and practice the safe recommendations by the Department of Health and CDC. Also, with the ratification or with the funding allocated to the Navajo Nation chapters, our chapter leadership are expected to have a ratification plan. That means all resolutions or all communication done during the declaration period or the declaration of emergency uh, must be ratified and must be documented with receipts uh, once we get through this, and we will get through this. We ask that all chapters all chapter members and all chapter leadership have a ratification plan so that we are able to um, track uh, all expenses. So I'm asking leadership. I need your leadership. I'm asking our council delegates and our chapter officials to continue keeping our Navajo people safe, to continue practicing those recommendations to keep our people safe. To avoid any types of gatherings or calling upon gatherings at the chapter level in order to uh, uh, call in for volunteers for large groups. I'm asking for your leadership that we um, flatten the curve and we ask our community members to stay home. I'll start to wrap up here. Lastly, there will be some communication coming from the Division of Community Development on HIPAA and the Privacy Protection Act. 
DCD is, is open and privy. We receive information from all 110 chapters, but I'm asking for community leadership that we adhere to understanding and avoid giving information and receiving information that may not be accurate and that we're asking that you have accurate source or confirmation on the information you are receiving and giving, especially at the chapter level or at the chapters and among chapter leadership. And that we're asking that you practice the utmost professional and confidentiality of the HIPAA law. And one last thing before I leave here today. There have been uh, anticipated um, projections and there have been anticipated um, uh, uh, forecasts of the COVID-19 coming to the Navajo Nation in the next two to three weeks. And I'm asking all of our community members to help decrease or flatten so that we avoid hitting the spike and we have the ability to do that. We also have the responsibility to do that. We have the ability to flatten that and to help lessen and decrease that spike. And I'm asking for your leadership and I'm asking for your ability to educate all of our people. Not everybody has access to the internet. And not everybody has access to written forms of documentation and information but you know your relatives and you know your family. You know how to reach your family and you know how to reach your community. And I'm asking that you do that in a safe manner and that you're educating your family. And if you see family outside, educate them, educate them to stay home. And if you see family going in groups to the store, educate your family. Educate them to designate one individual to pick up items. And at all costs, communicate so that we are protecting our elders and our children. The first of the month is coming. And many of our families have been maybe home and maybe looking forward to leaving, going to Flag, Page, Farmington, Winslow, or Gallup. And that puts our whole Navajo Nation in danger. So Ashona, please continue to take care of each other, continue to look out for each other, continue to educate each other. We will get through this. And it's going to take a lot of strength from one another and from each other to get through this. So I just want to say take care of yourselves take care of each other continue to take care of your families Hashino sha shi kodo da isino sa shaiti doctor profilia fowler the shijine ado ma idish kijni inchle ado todich ini bashish chin ashche da shinaldo trapa edashiche kototis ahol yede ade yise nasha ado kwaetra ho zange ishina nishna ti shina nishish ini ye e yaho division of human resources Hot A A Beshit Eat Litinle. A co Ajana Nishnash E E A Ya D Ko has Twisani Til K J K N Dal Nishi Bid the Nebel Kahotzo Ajita in Nishi Aja Hashin Sago Bikidin Shi Ado has tradi the Melia Jdoba A Kone La E Nahan Dal Nish Ado Nah ne e Hashin Sago Behes Ani Dan Lini E dot Slato Bik e Dest E Kahashin La Hashine La E N Dark Asinle. Ako a nido e ya hashin sagodi de kosen sao yeni ko nahan sni. O konde belady kashi o huinzen. Do hashin sago na ntkinigi. 
Ado 
Yate, Shiket Oshadine, Shay Doreen, Nanaba, make Paul Yenishia, Kia Anin Shlim, Bilagana Bashishi, Honorathni, the Shiche, Bilagana, the Shinella, Chinli, Detnasha. My name is Doreen McPaul, and I serve as the Navajo Nation Attorney General. And in that capacity, I oversee the Navajo Nation Department of Justice, and we are responsible for providing legal advice to the Navajo Nation government. Uh, also, oversee the Navajo Nation Prosecutor's Office. Um, our department right now is working very closely with the Health Command Center under the Department of Health to address the legalities uh, of the current public health crisis. And uh, with respect to the Navajo Nation authorities that we're working under, um, those include the Navajo Nation Code, uh, Council legislation, the um, executive order from the office of the president and vice president as well as the now four public health emergency orders that are uh, issued uh, by the Navajo Nation Department of Health. And I want to go over uh, just briefly the current public health emergency order uh, and share some information. Um, our public health experts at the nation have determined that the COVID-19 virus continues to increase on the Navajo Nation at an alarming rate, and the cluster and community spread throughout the nation now constitutes a major public health disaster. And I'm just sharing information that is directly from the public health emergency um, order number four, which is available on the NDOH website if you need a copy of that. Um, the Navajo Nation uh, currently is beyond uh, containment and mitigation of risk, and therefore, uh, must take extraordinary measures to address the public health disaster. Uh, one of the things that this public health emergency order does is uh, let the um, businesses and entities on the Navajo Nation know that the um, command center may commandeer resources uh, to support the um, expanded medical services that are required to meet the needs of the nation. And you may have seen um, in the, the president's um, um, social media posts as well as in the media generally, and if you're in the Chinle community where I'm from, um, overnight there was a FEMA medical station uh, implemented at the Chinle Community Center, and that was done with the community's cooperation. Um, but the, pub the public health emergency order number four does let um, everybody know that if the command center needs to commandeer those resources, they will do that. But tend to, uh, currently, they're working cooperatively in those communities, which is great. One of the important things in the public health order is that it shares that every individual has the responsibility to themselves and to their families, their relatives, and their communities to act in accordance with the public health emergency order. Um, it requires, the current public health disaster requires centralized coordination and full cooperation to avoid duplication of effort, waste of resources, and to minimize risk of exposure to COVID-19, which as we know includes the potential loss of life. Um, the intent and purpose of the order is to elevate the response to the current public health disaster um, addressing the dire strain on medical response capabilities as well as further restricting the movement of individuals on the nation. So with respect to that, um, I think everybody is aware that there's currently a curfew on the nation from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. Uh, indoor and outdoor public gatherings uh, are limited to no more than five people. For uh, non-essential businesses, those remain closed. For essential businesses, there are additional requirements, including limiting operations so that folks can uh, comply with the curfew. There's a requirement for businesses to operate on a curbside or drive-through basis, and there's some exceptions to that. 
there uh, is a requirement for businesses to provide disinfectant wipes uh, or spray for customers, uh, as well as limiting the number of customers in, um, in stores and ensuring that uh, folks who are waiting to enter those establishments or to pay maintain the social distancing requirements. And I, I did mention the mandatory coordination with the Health Command Center. There's more information about that in the public health um, emergency order itself, as well as some information um, regarding uh, volunteer activity and coordination of those efforts as well. So I encourage you to read that. Uh, importantly, one of the things that the public health emergency order also does is it, it um, it, it provides that the Navajo Police Department Emergency Operations Center shall continue to be activated to support and coordinate with the Health Command Center to enforce the requirements of these orders. And I know that folks have a lot of questions regarding uh, enforcement of these orders. And I will share that our Office of the Prosecutor is working closely with Navajo um, Public um, Navajo Police Department on, on these issues and we've provided guidance um, to NPD on uh, enforcement of these particular orders. In addition to Navajo PD, um, uh, the Navajo Occupational Safety and Health Administration or NOSHA is also authorized to enforce safety standards as well as closed facilities on an emergency basis. So from the position of the Department of Justice, our, our position is that the Department of Health does have the authority to create these uh, public health standards and to enforce them, and these requirements are necessary um, public health standards during this time, and they must be followed. The, they, I did mention the last time that these public health standards apply to all public gatherings, including Christian gatherings, and we do have information that um, some um, um, church groups are continuing to meet, and I did want to share that um, we have analyzed the free exercise of religion um, under the Navajo Bill of Rights, and we are advising the Health Command Center that those Christian gatherings, gatherings can be um, shut down. And so I do want to let folks know that, and I also want to share that working with the Health Command Center, they are working to put up on their website two things. Um, one, a link um, to in informing people how to contribute to the nation's COVID-19 efforts, but also a link to uh, report non-compliance with these issues. And we do get those um, the, that information in, in telephonically and by email and, and other means, but we are coordinating all of those through the command center. And so just you know, be aware that those are being reported directly to the nation and we're working to address those. Um, as President mentioned earlier, that the nation remains closed to visitors and there are certain um, remedies for excluding uh, folks who do not comply with um, those uh, directives. The, that's, that's a basic overview of the current public health emergency order. I did also want to um, touch upon briefly the current um, executive order from the Navajo Nation Office of the President and Vice President, which um, shuts down, closes the Navajo Nation government offices. And I did want to share that working with the um, President's Council, there is a uh, new executive order, uh, number 002-20, which extends the declaration of emergency. It extends the closure of the Navajo Nation government offices for an additional three weeks, and also strongly recommends to the Board of Education uh, to uh, close schools on, on the nation as well. And this is currently in draft form, but it is ready for signature, and President is here. Executive orders require the signature of the President, uh, Vice President, and the Attorney General, and we are all here in the room, so we are gonna sign this here and uh, make this uh, have the force of law. And so I'll turn this over to the President.
thank you again um, for all our viewers here and around the world, I guess. I, I just saw that we have folks that are listening, Navajo citizens listening from all over the world. And as the, our Attorney General mentioned, we are gonna be signing the Executive Order number 002-20 which will be extending the declaration of a state of emergency due to the COVID-19 virus on the Navajo Nation, extending the closure of the Navajo Nation government offices and related entities. And um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the town hall, this will be to close the schools for the rest of the school year, uh, also to close down the executive branch for up until April um, 26, and then we'll reevaluate uh, that when we get closer to the, to the deadline. And this is just um, to minimize the spread of the virus and to stop it here on the Navajo Nation. So if we can uh, have you let everyone know about this order and also casinos will be closed uh, for the much of the month of April. And we'll post this on our Facebook page. And also it'll be on the Navajo Department of Health page. So. Uh, our Attorney General Doreen McPaul, you know, mentioned um, what it entails. But if you want to read it, it'll be up on our webpage shortly today. So uh, this is for the health and well-being of our people out there, and um, following through and on some of the recommendations that we're getting as well. So thank you. And with that, we will sign this executive order into law. On this 31st day of March, I, Jonathan Nez, and also Vice President Myron Leiser. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, it's been an extreme honor to uh, be uh, working with you and all our fine, uh, 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 smart, uh, diligent, uh, wise uh, team, our council of our team. Well, we said that their safety in the council of many, and so we rely on them for their guidance, direction, advisement, and leadership. So uh, we're just um, looking forward to uh, extending this again for the safety of our people. Every one of you, we wish that no one would uh, contract this uh, virus and much more uh, that no one would succumb. So uh, with that, is, that's our heart, our heart felt plea and cry. And as I sign this here, that, that's what's going into the signature. So yeah, along. And now um, our Attorney General, Doreen McPaul, gets to seal it now. Okay, there it is. We'll get this scanned and distributed to all of the uh, executive branch employees as well as posted on the um, OPVP website and the Department of Health uh, website as well. Thank right. you. Thank you, AG. Of course. That. I think up next is uh, Mr. Willie, Director yes. Willie. We, uh, we have uh, JT Willie will be coming on and uh, just giving us the update and giving us all of the latest developments with uh, regard to um, our special um, uh, I guess provisions being made by our local merchants and retailers and so uh, we'll give this uh, without further ado to uh, Mr. J.T. Willey, our Executive Director of the Navajo Department of Economic Development. So J.T., take it away. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Vice President. Auto, um, Shikado, Shikaz, and Nihido, Yate, uh, Auto Nand, and Shinigi, a Tapaha, a Slido, Tachini, a Pashin, a Shihi, a Shiro Kia, an Eda Shanale, 
Aro she e a in lei bahas adent a si e nasha aro a she yiji e ji chuli e yin shi aro di a nan nish kan chari gi e da e si a a lanje da se da hiki e sa link a tso da e si e he he in trago shi e do shi te zene di konde a he a ba a he in singo do le di konde shi nan nish kwa lan do do da e si di kon a nihik e Aro di konde ni he business ki njono go da ho yando beke se zingo do beke na anishko do le. What I'll be speaking to you about uh, today is going to be about what we have going on for tomorrow. Yes, uh, kawa a first of the month. Uh, it will be our first of the month plans. As we all know, uh, first of the month is the time that we're used to traveling off our homelands, our homesteads, and going into the local border towns to do our shoppings. However, tomorrow, as we all know with the current awareness going on around the Navajo Nation that has come to affect our areas is um, putting a plan together to keep all of us local. As our president and our vice president have mentioned and also our attorney general mentioned earlier is that uh, we need to stay grounded and stay local. So through the Division of Economic Development, myself and my team put together a plan with the support of all of our divisions under the executive branch to find ways to keep our people local. Our shoppers, our elderly, we're being considerate of their needs at the same time. So with the, the local shoppers uh, within the regions, Bashes, Groceries, the Net Markets has, has given us the support that we need in order to provide uh, local shopping for our elderly. Uh, age 60 years and plus is what we have set up tomorrow. So tomorrow, um, April 1st, at all eight locations throughout the Navajo Nation, uh, we have a plan set up for buying local and buying from the Bashes to their markets. We start at 6 in the morning and we conclude at 1 o'clock in the p in p.m. So during this time frame at all of the Bashes locations, we have seven of them in Arizona and we have one in New Mexico at Crown Point. You are able to come to one of these locations starting at 6 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon to do all your essential shopping necessary. That includes your groceries, your essential products and items. Several questions have come up from many of you as to if we'll, if the grocery store will have essential products. And rest assured, yes, we have been told by the grocery market uh, owners from the corporate offices that these particular locations will be fully stocked and have all the necessary supplies and inventory uh, needed for essential shopping. However, uh, we do stress and recommend and, and want you to be able to know that not to, not to buy beyond your capability and your limits and think about other people during, that, during this time that we're going through with the shortage of products coming to the Navajo Nation. So in addition to tomorrow, at all of our site locations, we also have various programs set up from the Division of Social Services uh, through their self-reliance program will be taking applications and also reviewing them with clients who are able to come in at this time. Auto AL food distribution, uh, Claudine and her staff will be coming in to take again applications and also talk about distribution of the products and the foods that our elderly and our, our demographic areas get within the, around the different regions. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you tomorrow at any of the Bashes locations throughout the Navajo Nation. As you are aware, there's one here in Windrock, Arizona. We have one over in Sanders, Arizona. We have one over in Pinon, Arizona, Delcon, Arizona, Tuba City, Arizona, Cayenta, Arizona, Auto in New Mexico. We have our location in Crown Point. So as I said, tomorrow we look forward to seeing all of you and to continue to say stay local and stay grounded. In addition to this, uh, we understand that the current economy has been in question. You know, what's going on out there? What, what can help can we get? How can Window Rock help us? How can Division of Economic Development help us? And we're looking and we have put together some resource information that's coming down the wire from different allocations of fundings through stimulus grants and applications and loans. Uh, we'll be pushing those out within the next couple of days. Uh, we also have been meeting with our enterprises to ensure contingency plans on how we can continue to serve the Navajo people 
as we are well aware through this time that we're going to is very unknown to us. So through that process, we have to learn to develop the strategy and contingency plan to restore the Nauvoo economy back to normal. Also to continue to support our small businesses in all different areas in the sectors of the Navajo Nation uh, economy out there. We're gonna continue to uh, offer our services through the Division of Economic Development. Also, uh, if you are a business owner, an entrepreneur, on the Navajo Nation that does business on the Navajo Nation, I encourage you to fill out the economic impact survey that's online. It's on our website at www.navajoeconomy.com. Through that, we're able to collect data and necessary information for compiling a resource and stimulus package moving forward. So, uh, I'll be turning it over to our division director uh, who oversees the Department of Health, Dr. Jill Jim. Well, good morning. I am Dr. Jill Jim with the Navajo Department of Health. I am here to talk about the response to the COVID-19, the Kosensagi-19 Olegani. So, I'm originally from Navajo Mound and here in Winter Rock wanting to share information about the command center. The Navajo Department of Health through the Declaration of Public Health Emergency are responding to um, the emergency. We are working through an incident command structure and working with various partners, local health departments, um, businesses as the vision of economic development, other tribal programs as well. Under the command structure, we have an incident commander who is David Nez, and also we have a, dep a new deputy um, commanders on, who is Harlan Cleveland and Herman Shorty, which will be assisting with the comprehensive plan that we have. Under the plan, I am a liaison to the command center and I function in providing information to the community about the, the plans going forward. Right now, the, uh, we are in a pandem pandemic mode of, as, as an acceleration phase, meaning that we'll co we will continue to see increasing cases in the, in the Navajo Nation and already have across the United States. In this phase, what we're trying to do is prepare for various levels of response to the emergency. Um, we are somewhat um, past the prevention phase a couple weeks ago to some extent um, regarding that to prevent COVID-19, now that it's community spread, we have to take stronger initiatives and actions personally as an individual and for the community. This means less traveling as we had indicated to stay home, that you stay home, less travel, and also monitoring yourself if you have um, been exposed to an individual with COVID-19 and also monitoring your own flu-like symptoms as well. It appears that the the COVID-19 is, is not decelerating, it's actually increasing, so this means that we're taking every precaution possible through the command center to make sure that um, we're working with our healthcare facilities. This means that we have to have um, proper procedures and protocols that everyone has to um, abide by, such as calling ahead to the facility to make sure that you're letting them know that you have flu-like symptoms. Also, in the facilities, there are different, um, as probably the area, Navajo Area Indian Health Service mentioned, there is the structure of intake is quite going to be different. Some areas that we visited, including um, separating patients with respiratory symptoms and non respiratory symptoms, and if you have a cold like um, or flu like symptoms, you're routed to a different process. So that just know that that is probably what's going to be considered the norm in trying to isolate individuals that are sick from um, healthy people when you go into the hospital. And that's also the same situation when we also are in the community, we're looking at social distancing, meaning keeping three to six feet away from individuals and making sure that you're not shaking hands or doing um, or having close contact with individuals that are possibly sick. And so with COVID-19, as we mentioned before, um, you might have individuals that are mildly, mildly sick that can still um, transfer the um, or transmit the 
COVID-19 to another, another individual. So that's why it's very important that you, we all take care of our elders, especially when they're, you're going to travel, limiting individuals that need to get essential items if, as necessary, but otherwise um, you should be plenty replenishing your food for a number of days to stay home and bunker down and making sure that you're um, not um, moving around with outside your home to other homes nearby or within your community. And that's one way to stop the spread. This means definitely looking at the new public health order number four to make sure that you're, that the, some businesses will have different models such as you will be getting gas um, given to you as well. And then also at home, you will also make sure that you practice cleaning um, your household items and also um, uh, practicing isolation or monitoring. Another thing I want to emphasize out there in the community is when someone does get COVID-19 and they're, they don't have a lot of symptoms or they're mildly sick and they're sent home for monitoring, please um, follow the precautions. Um, to, don't stigmatize them because there can be proper home um, cleaning initiatives that you can do, such as um, making sure they're, they're in, an, in a room within the home and then you're sanitizing and also cleaning your dishes as you can. So just fo properly follow the CDC instructions as well. So another thing that we have to keep in mind that all of us are in this together, we can slow and stop the spread of COVID-19 by following what the health authorities say, what CDC says, what our president says, what all our tribal leaders say out in the community, and especially listen to your the kids because they also know that um, they have things that they hear um, through, the, through the social media that are positive messages um, such as save lives and other messages that you hear that they share with the elders. So continue to do that. It's all about information sharing. Department of Health Public Health Emergency Incident Command Center um incident commander David safety Washington dot any do quadi state health departments dot yeni quadjano hot abit in daily nisto do hot ashi in quadi in daily nisho hadi the cost and tagi um ashon hadi nature hot on need for the needs on go quad in daily nisha creature ado ado a quad the cost of yeni do the arts or data has yanto a data on the sendo a data has yanto a quadi a quichin quadi David Nez, Incident Commander, like to speak to my Navajo audience uh, first, and then I'll uh, speak to English. Koyate are the Isolzagi to Ado Dinal Kidibigi Dashi, than he Nathigi, um, Kodotsagi, a ya to Kodoshi to um, Incident Commander for the Navajo Nation Health Command Center located out of Winter Rock. A co Kutta in Hilhaza. A co Kodot Ojidas, Tanago Bashin at all, Lechu di Lange, Igi, a ya di Koche, um, the Kosan Sagi, na states at Tapati, Nenegi, Koni, Trail Negi. A co yego e yak and he instinct a baronitzen. At 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 in his hot zogit at en a bucago con betahon no co ebony na e codon he and he has ado e ya e halit ale and he den ne. A codobacadi lojo e enchina nishinils and a co din raise eight imbatahois zogojo trats at taco e belhazan, coja ai chespati, ne ado six thirty eight. A co conzel in as a gojo con a 
Stay home order at no anana general sauce. A co ebi ye go na edi da ne edi ha late a le ea di dinit hail negi um the cousin sagi na states at tapati nenegi ha late a le ne hodil nila jay ye seben ye hat en edi a codon ye a na lishinit lenegi ebini na edi na lia ba wando sanda otli lodo the qui was shake at that at this car na lishitan lenegi sat. But Navajo Nation Health Command Center, and 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 we do get in some uh, additional uh, resources or people that is going to be helping us uh, out for the entire Navajo Nation now because now we have a total we have a uh, community spread across Navajo Nation so that um, we can be able to um, now expand our uh, response and our resources as well. So I. Uh, Right now, our our main concern and our main uh, strategy to uh, support the the hospitals here on the Navajo Nations. We do have uh, 13 major hospitals here on the nation. We have uh, five IHS hospital and eight 638 hospitals. So um, the the facilities are expanding. They are taking out. A lot of the uh, other clinics and other um, hospital uh, services, and they're expanding in, in, into a more critical uh, patient uh, capacity at the moment. Uh, manpower is is critical. Um, with the expansion, we need a di- more additional uh, uh, professional uh, specialists, doctors, and nurses. So. Uh, that, that is a major concern at the moment. We also have um, um, shortage on our PPEs, and these are protective uh, equipment 
for our workers in the hospital as well as the public health in the field. Now we add additional uh, uh, law enforcement and more ambulance uh, services, including the fire department. So the PPE um, shortage is, is, is getting more thin as we add additional more resources to assist in, in, in our response here. The COVID-19 patients uh, uh, is on the increase. The situation is getting complex. Uh, we do have overflows and, and and one of the uh, the new objectives that we've been working on this week is that how do we begin to um, uh, contain or maintain uh, uh, monitor or isolation and quarantine on some of our people that needs to be uh, isolated for they are COVID-19 patients. So we are have people now looking at um, agreements on which facilities that, that we will be able to use to expand out as uh, as alternative uh, care sites. We're looking at gyms, motels, community centers, and churches, and any other uh, activity center that is available with a space that we could use for alternative care for our patients. So um, at the command center, we also are um, elevating our resources in terms of uh, bringing in additional uh, resources with manpower from our own tribal entities at the division level, at the president's uh, 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 division level with all the uh, special people that we're gonna need as, as we expand our um, command center from these locations. We also are bringing uh, FEMA individuals. We have a couple of staff that is now on site to assist on any resource needs, any requests, as well as uh, any uh, assessment that needs to be done here on the Navajo Nation to, to, to address our, our current situations. So we are... Um, we are in, in, in a situation to where, you know, we're shorthanded, but at the same time, I believe that our people are confident and that we will, uh, we will maintain um, our response and we, and we will uh, be out there and we will be here as your, as your main support. Thank you. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's uh Adol Shemasana A Wanda Small Canyon Del Mar will yet do Chiche A Paul Parish will yet in Aunt Um Shanella Huskeen A Bill B Gay will yet Adol Shanella Aston A Pauline Pauline Johnson B Gay will yet in Aunt Adol Ahiah Nehisot Klaegi Um Hello everybody, my name is Shandine Parrish and I'm Miss Navo Nation 2019-2020 and I would like everybody to take a deep breath. Everybody that's watching, just take a deep breath and just for a second, think about something that you're grateful for because in a world of chaos right now, there are many things to point out that are wrong, but at the end of the day, we have to remember what we're grateful for. And right now, I'm grateful that I get to um, 
I get to have lunch pretty soon. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to, first of all, say thank you to all of our first responders, to our doctors, to our nurses, to our healthcare workers, to the maintenance people that have to constantly clean the hospitals and have to constantly make sure that all of the environments that we're in in public spaces have to be clean. That includes our grocery store workers, our, um, our the people that work at the gas stations, our essential workers at NTUA, our essential workers that keep our internet going and everybody in between because you're helping our nation continue to thrive. And that's important to remember that we're still thriving that we are still here and that we are still Diné. This is who we are and we overcome the obstacles in our lives that are presented before us. And I just want to say thank you to all of our first responders, our firefighters, our police officers and everybody that's keeping us safe. So as many of you know, I am from Kayenta and since the president signed his declaration of the public health emergency and um, we've started to self-isolate ourselves and we've had curfews and so on and so forth. So I haven't seen my family in a really long time and as Miss Navajo, it's my duty to be here in Windrock. And I, and I share that because that's how personal this is to me. This is how important it is to me and to share the message that we need to stay home because staying home protects our elders, staying home protects our family members, it also protects our way of life, the many generations of teachings that have been passed down for to, to equate to who we are today. That's what we're protecting. And when we go to the store just to get a bag of hot Cheetos or um, you know, just to fill that craving or we're meeting somebody that that we are exposing ourselves to germs that we weren't exposed to before. So we're constantly making sure that we are keeping our family safe. And it's, it's yes, it's difficult for me to, to be self-isolated um, in this way and to be away from my family, but there's plenty of ways that I've been in contact with them through FaceTime, through our technology today. I call my grandparents every day and um, through social media, we can stay connected. One of the um, things I've started on Instagram, on my Instagram account, is I created a sign following the president's slogan of stay home, stay safe, and save lives. And every day I post a photo of what I'm doing at home. And so I just started this weekend, but some of the activities that I've been doing at home is I started to weave a new rug. I'm painting right now. I also play the piano. So those are some of the activities that I've been doing at home and I'll take a photo of it and post it on Instagram and I'll use the Navajo Department of Health hashtags and I'll tag the Navajo Department of Health because they also want to see that you're safe, that you're at home and that you're protecting your families. And so if you tag myself at Shandine Parish or you tag the Navajo Nation Department of Health, they'd be happy to share what you're doing at home because we want to know that you're safe and that you're healthy and that you're continuing to create and you're continuing to thrive on our nation. And that's important to remember is the positive and the things that we're grateful for. So another reason why it's so important to stay home is because we're also protecting our vulnerable communities. And I personally have asthma. So what that means is that when, if I contract COVID-19 and anybody that contracts COVID-19, it directly impacts your lungs. And that means that, that it's difficult to breathe. And so by, by preventing the spread, because we don't know how long the vaccines will, will come into play nationally, we don't know when it will be developed. So at this time, the most, um, the most we can do is to stay home and to prevent it to spread even further so that we can protect our elders and that we can protect our vulnerable communities. And um, that's just from a personal standpoint. And I wanted to share that because it is important. It's very, very important. Um, and if you have any questions about anything that anyone has said during this live stream, make sure you contact the Navajo Nation Health Command Center at 
928-871-7014. Again, that's 928-871-7014. And ask them anything and everything, because at this point, we, we are so inquisitive as human beings. And to make sure our questions are answered by the proper authorities, that's who, as a Navajo Nation, we turn to. So that's the Navajo Nation Health Command Center. Also, I would like to give a second phone number out. Um, it's for anybody that's having difficulty right now mentally. This is a very um, stark time, and we, we tend to let our minds drift um, not into great places. And if you would like to talk to somebody, you can call the Navajo Nation Health Command Center Mental Health um, Line. That's 928-810-7357. Again, that's 928-810-7357 in case you need somebody to talk to. Um, the last thing I would like to touch on is I know that as youth, we have a bunch of energy built up inside of us right now, and especially young, um, young Navajo women and men, we have a lot of, a lot of um, desire to help our people right now, and that's good. I commend you, and I really, I appreciate your heart. I appreciate where your mind is, and I, and I'm right there with you. Um, and if you, and if you've noticed, I. Um, through, through the Office of Ms. Navo's Facebook page, I might not have posted a bunch of events that I'm doing because I want everybody to know that at this time, it's important to focus on what our government has to say and that the resources that they're providing are resources that our Navajo people need to use. And I just want to reiterate the importance of the Navajo Nation Health Command Center and any volunteering, any types of efforts need to go through the Navajo Nation Health Command Center. Um, so I just want to say thank you so much for your efforts and um, I want to thank you for the the prayers and the constant comments because we're reading them we see them and um, we just want to say thank you so much for for staying home staying safe saving lives and staying connected so thank you